Well, today I got another package from Ubiquity. This is the Light 8 PoE. And if you've seen some of my other videos, which I'll go ahead and link somewhere on the screen up here for you. So far, I've taken apart some access points. And now let's go ahead and check out this switch. Let's go ahead and open this. So we've got the switch right here. And looks like the power adapter right here. Here is a mounting plate and some screws, wall anchors, got the power supply, and this is 54 volts at 1.1 amps. We've got our little manual with the QR code, and here is the switch. I'm wondering if there's like some screws or something under here. Take a look. Yep, there we go. Now it looks like we have four main screws here and then another four screws right here as well. You can see the reset button right here. Now real quick, before I start going over all the chips on the board here, I just want you to know that I'm going to leave links down in the description below to all these pages that I'm going to show you. And if you're liking this video so far, go ahead and make sure you slap that like button to help out with the algorithm. So we got this chip over here, it is a MTAC G48209SNG. Taking a look at that, that is a integrated circuit here and is a DC to DC converter. And all those specs are listed on this page. For you. Now the next chip that we're gonna go ahead and take a look at is right here. This is the Winbond W631GG8NB TAC12. And taking a look at this page here, that is identifying it as some DRAM at 128 megs. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this chip right here, which is a MX25L12835FMI TAC10G. If we take a look at this chip, it is another integrated circuit and has 128 megs of memory. So the next chip we're gonna look at is by Texas Instruments right here, and that is a LC125A. Taking a look at this PDF file from Texas Instruments, it is a quadruple bus buffer gate with three state outputs. Say that three times fast. Quadruple bus buffer gate with three state outputs. Quadruple bus buffer gate with three state outputs. Quadruple bus buffer gate with three state outputs. Now let's go ahead and turn this over and see what chips are underneath. I went ahead and already removed these screws just so it's faster to disassemble here on camera. Let's go ahead and lift this up. Interesting, there's nothing under here. That is in the general area of right about here. And I'm guessing there's probably nothing under this either. And that's just covering the other side of where the chip is on here underneath the heat sink. And there we go. So let's go ahead and put this back together. Now that I've completely voided this warranty, let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. So let's plug this in. Okay, got some light here. Let's plug it in. So I've got some status lights and looks like it is booting up. I just need to wait for the Unify controller to go ahead and pick this up. So it's still not showing up here. We come over to the main switch over to the ports and port insights. You can see it is on port five. Let me unplug it. So that is right, it's on port five. Plug it back in. Well, that just took a long time for it to show up here. So now we'll go ahead and click on adopt. Now it is adopting. And while we're waiting for it to adopt, in the Unify controller, let me know if there's any other Ubiquity items that you'd like to see me take apart. Now it is updating. So I went ahead and grabbed the Unify 6 Lite and also the Pro and LR. 
And what I'm going to do here is actually plug them all in and see if it can power all of these. All right, so we can see they are booting up. Let me go back to the switch. It's interesting, it shows that uh, PoE is off, but everything is lit up. Oh, there we go. So it's just taking a moment for it to propagate. So far, it is powering all three access points. I'm curious how much power it's using. So check this out. It's taking uh, about 27 and a half watts or so here, powering these three access points. And I'm going to take a APAC light and plug this guy in too. And we'll see what kind of power it pulls. So far, it's not doing anything. Well, I remembered why this won't actually work on here, and that is because this APAC light is actually uh, 24 volt. So it was a different standard of PoE that this switch doesn't support. Now, somewhere I have an adapter, but I couldn't find it here looking around in my home office. So I'm going to go ahead and just hook up a PoE camera so we can see what kind of power that this is pulling. All right, so now I'm plugging in this Hike Vision 4K camera, and we can see it is lit up on that port. So we're idling at around 32 watts, 33 watts. Let me unplug it. Now we're over at like 27. Now in the box here, it looks like that it can go up to 60 watts as it has the external 60 watt power adapter. What this means to you is that you should be able to go ahead and power four access points no problem with this tiny little switch. So who is this switch for? Well, it is a inexpensive switch at $109 MSRP, if you can get your hands on one, that has four PoE ports. Now those four PoE ports support 802.3 AT and AF, so PoE plus as well. And although the power supply can supply up to 60 watts of power, after doing a little bit more research on it, it looks like that it's rated for a maximum of 52 watts. So if you were looking to go ahead and power, say like four access points or a combination of access points and some surveillance cameras, then you should be fine with this. Now, personally, what I would have loved to have seen is if seven of the eight ports were PoE, so you would have like a standard uplink and then having seven ports being able to provide power. Ideally, I think that would appeal to more people that have more PoE devices to go ahead and power. But with the price point of it only being $109 MSRP, it's not bad for what it offers. Now, as you saw before, when I tore it down, there are no fans on it, so it's completely silent. Now, it also comes with a wall mounting kit that you could mount this on the wall if you like. Now, if you haven't seen my other videos, I'm going to go ahead and place them around here where I went ahead and tore down actually each of these access points that I was plugging in earlier. So all three different Wi-Fi 6 access points from Ubiquiti that are released to date, I've completely disassembled and tested them out. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.